Hey all. So uh, just quickly, it would be awesome if anybody watching would like and subscribe the videos. Obviously don't like it if you don't like it. Uh, it just really does help. I'm really trying to build the channel now and get some uh, some good quality tutorials out there um, and also sort of try and help with people's questions and so on. This is a bit of a bit of a revisit of, of a playlist um, that I had previously. I sort of did a couple of videos and, and didn't and I thought it might be an idea rather than trying to sit through long tutorials and everything to have just like lab time where you just look at different things and how to set up different things uh, as quickly as possible. So that's that out of the way um, rather than me saying we're going to make it a quick video and then waffling for ages. So today we're going to look at in the lab today we're going to look at the URL filtering. Um, it's something that Palo Alto devices obviously are more than just a packet filter they're more than just you know um, IP and port so we need to start looking at how we're going to really secure uh, networks and we're going to pick on cisco.com today so if we look at if we just go over to our test machine again this is the one that is running behind the the firewall and go to cisco.com we find that we make our way to cisco.com okay and if we look on the center monitor we it, the firewall we can see that this is our rule that we're going out on and of course there's no profiles here now there's, there's a couple of ways to get to the profiles just quickly you can either go in there go under actions and then you've got your profiles you can either select a profile as in separate profiles or you can go for a group or none so what we're going to do is we're going to put a url filtering profile on it that's going to block us getting to cisco.com uh, and then we're going to show how we could um, how we could uh, not how we could mitigate that how we could uh, whitelist if you will that URL <clears throat> okay so firstly we're going to go to objects because we haven't got a URL filter and profile configured yet there is a default one uh, you can enforce a default one if you like or you can edit the default profile um, what I tend to do is because there's uh, block categories in here anyway and there's block categories so abuse drugs adult it's a, a best practice thing what I'd be tempted to do is I'd be tempted to clone it we're going to clone it to another we're going to call this the lab URL profile okay and then as we can see quickly we go through we've got the categories and these are the, the blocks for the site access um, there's several several uh, options you can have alert so uh, an important thing is if you're looking at this really quickly if it's on allow then it'll just allow it and there'll be no log for it if you need to log allowed traffic then that needs to be on alert so these are the basic ones i just checking ransomware is something that it speaks about um sort of quite a lot now uh, although that's sort of going away it was a category that was added added not too long ago so that's block as well so what we're going to do is we're going to go okay with that now i happen to know that cisco.com is in the computer and internet info uh, category so we are going to block that and we're going to block the user credential submission which is uh, all configured under here we'll look at that at another lab at some point and get that working okay going to okay that and then I'm going to go back to our policy uh, obviously it's now not it's not applied anywhere yet and we're going to go into our profile I say there's two ways of getting to it you can get to it either through the rule itself or here I'm going to select separate profiles because you haven't got any other profiles and it's not in a group I love your L profile okay and then we're going to commit that to the firewall now once we go back to our uh, our test box our test device when we try to go to cisco.com because cisco.com falls under that url uh, category it should now be blocked however obviously that's not necessarily entirely desirable so we need to know how we can block say computer internet and info uh, but allow certain sites um, and then we'll we'll, we'll add that um, we'll add that custom url category uh, at the top and show how it's how it's evaluated okay so that's now uh, committed so if we switch back to 
drop this down, what we should now see is if we try and access it, we get web page blocked. We get our, our user at the minute is populated with the IP address because we haven't got user ID active and we get cisco.com. But as we said before, um, this is obviously something that you might want to allow. Um, certainly in most production environments, access to cisco.com is probably desirable. So, However, just before we do that, what we'll do is we'll just quickly run back to the firewall. We'll just have a look in the monitor tab. And we can see in the URL filtering logs, we can see that our uh, the log that's been created for our um, for our block action. So we have the cisco.com, that's the URL that's being blocked. If we expand this, we can have a look into this and we can see all the uh, all this stuff about it. Um, as well, just to say really, really, really quickly, so if you are in a situation like this and you have a look and it shows you, so it shows you the category that's there. Um, a lot of times people will have bespoke um, URLs and and, uh, and and web uh, stuff that's that's bespoke to their company, and a lot of times that will get uh, dropped because of the categorization or something like that. So you can either override it as we're going to do, um, although there is a link here directly from the the log where you can go straight to uh, the cloud and you can request a category change for that for that URL. Um, usually takes one to two days. Uh, I have known it be as quick as. 20 minutes um, so then that's that's all good so if we need now to circumvent that so we are going to our URL filtering there we said that for most people that are using this we don't want them to have computer and internet info uh, but for some people we, we, we do now we're going to do this broadly because um, we haven't got user ID or anything like that so we're going to go straight for here so <coughs> what we're going to do is going to create a custom URL category it's going to be called URL block exceptions, which uh, may or may not be the most intuitive of, of names. And then we're going to simply put our cisco.com. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, have to make sure we cover all iterations of cisco.com. So if the user goes to www, then we get that as well. So the best way to do that is to spell it correctly for a start. Uh, and as it says here, as he says at the bottom as well, to ensure the exact entry match, use the forward slash. So if we use the forward slash, then it'll only match whatever cisco.com. Okay, and then just to make sure that we don't get caught out, we'll also allow cisco.com because they're not the same thing. This is going to allow everything dot cisco.com, and this will just to allow cisco.com. Okay, so we're going to do that. So that exception is there now. So now this will appear because that because that uh, category, that custom category has been created. This will appear here, and we'll have an option to do something with it. Now, if we get none, then just no action will be taken at all. This is something you'd choose if you was using it for something else. If you was creating a custom category, for instance, for um, decryption or so on, you do none. Uh, but then we have the other, the same. The same actions we have to continue and override and so on so what we're going to do is we're going to allow it because we want to allow specifically cisco and we're going to allow user credential submission uh, in this particular use case user credential submission would be good because uh, nine times out of ten your cisco id um, that you'd use to log in to uh, to get support or anything like that or, or download files would more than likely be your corporate credentials um, user credential detection is pretty much designed to stop you people uploading or using their user credentials from the um, from the corporation uh, based on like phishing sites and so on where you send it to but cisco.com you know there has to be an, ele an element of trust in this zero trust world so I'm going to click OK with that we know that our lab URL profile is applied to our policy so we just need to commit it OK so we're going to commit that once that's committed, we'll then close down the browser on the uh, on the desktop, reopen it because it's designed to delete all its cache when it when it um, closes down or set to rather than designed, uh, and then we'll see if we can get there. Okay, so now that's done. So let's go and uh, let's go and check and make sure that we are now allowed to get to Cisco.com. 
Okay, so inside browser, set cisco.com. Okay, now we're allowed to get to cisco.com. We can go to the solutions, we can look at whatever we want to have a look at. Uh, now, just to prove that we're still blocking, however, that we're blocking um, computer and internet info, my website, mode44.co.uk, is class as computer and internet info and if we try to go to my site it's still blocked because it's computer and internet info so that's very very quickly that's how you create a, a profile say you start to block stuff that you want to prevent people from going to but also additionally how you allow certain certain users to certain uh, certain sites or certain sites within a category for instance <clears throat> okay so that's it nice and sweet um, just under or just over 10 minutes um, see you for the next one